Bodies are a very complex behavior. Um, I think that we don't really realize just how much goes into it. I mean, we're asking them to do a position, hold a position, and not move with whatever other factors are going on around distractions, you moving, et cetera, et cetera. So I like to start stays. Um, like Susan Garrett has her crate games, if you guys have seen that. Mm -hmm. And I like the concept, but I want my dog in the crate to actually relax. And I feel like the crate games, when they're when you play crate games, they're in the crate like waiting to be released um, rather than relaxing. And so I think it creates um, a little bit of conflict about being in the crate. So I've kind of adapted, and I'm not the only one, um, the crate games idea to a station. So whether it's a cot or a bath mat or just a crate mat or whatever that you want to use, um, we're going to teach the dogs first just to be on the station and not necessarily have to hold a position, but they're just in that space. And as we're moving around, et cetera, and go through the stages of teaching stays, um, they're just in a location versus having to hold a position. So then you don't have to go back if you're, if you're on a sit stay and they lie down, you don't have to, you know, like, do I fix the stay? They stayed, they laid down, do I fix it? You don't have to go through all of that. Mm -hmm. And then we build in the position later. Does that make sense? Um, and I always try to do um, duration first. So I'm going to work up to like 30 seconds of them staying on the place with high rate of reward first before I try to move away or do anything distracting. And then the next step is I will add distraction. So like while they're on their little stay on their little place, then I might like move my feet around or like turn around or do whatever, but I'm close enough that if I do this and they stay, I can feed them really quickly for stay. Um, the, I think the hardest thing that we tend to do is like sit, stay, you know, everybody does this thing. And then like as the dog's about to leave, you're like, okay, and the dog is already broken. Mm -hmm. And then you're way over here to feed them and then you feed them when the dog comes to you. Um, and so I think by staying really close to them first and adding all kinds of distractions, you're building a lot of value for staying because you can reward quickly. And then by the time you start to move away, um, the dogs have a lot of value for staying and it's really easy to move away. Um, yeah. Susan Garrett did a camp thing and she was talking about um, she was talking about how, um, now I'm very distracted, I'm like looking at the window for no reason. All right, so she had like homework at night was one of those boxes, the A-frame box thing. And one group was supposed to see how far they could send the dog to the box. And one group was supposed to see um, how many angles they could send the dog into the box, and but from close. And then when they had graduation night or the last night, whatever, um, the contest was who could send the dog to the box from further away. And the people that had been up close with all the different angles were actually able to send the dog further away than the people that had been practicing sending the dog. Because by being up close and rewarding a lot, the dog had a lot of value for the box. Where the people that had been trying to send, the dog didn't have enough understanding or value for the box. And so I think sometimes we want to try to get distance really quickly. And um, it's not, it's about understanding first, and then you can get the distance very easily. 